<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me here, and it's great to be here. And um, I'm from Norway, as Ashley said. And um, uh, in Norway, the demand for WebAssembly musicians is, is not that high, but obviously there's a demand here. So, so and you didn't have any musicians, so you had to fly one <laughs> across the Atlantic and. Uh, yeah, and uh, the hat is, uh, I'll pass this around eventually. If you like the music, you can uh, put some up for the trip back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's get going, and uh, we'll see if, oh, here we are. So I will just say that uh, this is um, uh, JavaScript on the left side. Uh, like being said here, we're not going to kill JavaScript. We're going to keep it because for um, actually sequencing the music, JavaScript is great. But for the hot path, which is rendering real-time synthesis, we need something predictable when it comes to performance, and that is where WebAssembly comes in. And I've used AssemblyScript, which creates small, compact binaries, fast. It has the optimization. I just tried this optimizer that uh, Alan uh, showed us, and it uh, didn't give any more than 0 0.03 percent for this <laughs> assembly. So, so that's assembly script has already this optimization built in. <clears throat> and um, yeah, uh, we have some new technology in uh, Chrome now. It's coming to other browsers soon, I hope, I expect. It's called Audio Workload, and it makes low latency possible. So now I have this synthesizer and this sequencer, and I will play some music for you. So. We'll see if there will be any sound. so that we can, oh, this happens when you do things live. <laughs> so uh, as you can see here, we can control the music, um, the sequence here. We can now turn off the pianos, for example. And we can um, go and play this, uh, lead instrument that we have it. And it remembers what I played. And uh, if I if I'm happy with that, I can say that oh I want to use this, so let's paste in the code for what I just recorded. And now it's there. Thank you. 
the on the right side here we have the sounds and as you can see uh, we actually have to program everything here we have to set up the oscillators we have to set up the filters the envelopes and if i for example i can change the characteristics of this flute that we hear here Oh, maybe bring that back. Yeah. Okay, things doesn't always go as you expect, but uh, I will come back to this. And I will go on with my slides, I actually have some slides. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this is uh, the background. Uh, my background was uh, in the late 80s, 90s. There were something called uh, trackers on the Commodore Amiga. Uh, many of you have been into that, heard about it? Anyone? Uh, there are some. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, then and we used uh, M68K, this Motorola 68K processor, and we programmed assembly, and um, this is kind of the thing, I'm saying, coming back to this, it's, uh, it's good to have web assembly that is kind of a low level assembly language and getting back to those roots. And uh, in 2005, I tried to create something similar with uh, Java, uh, because it had uh, kind of promised this portability and uh, and uh, I created this uh, digital audio workstation called Frinica. It worked very well. It was lots of open source contributions as well. Uh, but it, it doesn't run in the browser. Java applets is no longer, and it wasn't really a Java applet either. It was a desktop application, and that's what Java is limited to. It's uh, desktop apps. So that's the middle one there. That's the trackers on the left. and. Uh, uh, recently, about a year or two ago, I was um, introduced to uh, synthesizer written in x86 assembly, which is called Forklang. It, it's uh, made for producing music in less than four kilobytes. And it's really awesome. It sounds uh, just like this, maybe even more awesome. I'm not even there as this synth really, but uh, I was just amazed by how what you can actually do with so little amount of code, so little amount of uh, compute power, and I wanted to see could this be done in WebAssembly. And WebAssembly is great for these sort of things. You can create compact binaries, you can get performance, and you can do it in the web browser. So we get the portability that Java doesn't have. It, it can run in, on mobile devices, everywhere, so. And a word of warning, when you're experimenting with this, especially on the right side where you have the assembly script, uh, you should be re really careful because uh, these uh, synthesizers can produce sudden unexpected very loud noise and might damage your hearing. And uh, you should keep the volume low, especially when using headphones. And you should make sure you know where the mute button is. And I, uh, fortunately, the sound technician has added a limiter to, uh, to <laughs> so if I do something wrong, I already managed to do so, so <laughs> save your hearing. Okay, so we're back to the basic here. And this is not very fun to listen to, but uh, it's just a simple instrument. And uh, so that you don't get too tired of this, I will just uh, make it a bit richer by adding another oscillator so you can see that. We add another sine oscillator and we will just add some more like seven extra half notes and uh, when we actually make the sound here 
we will also add the second oscillator. And we'll see what happens. Line 21? Oh, thank you. Yeah. There was something. <laughs> Always good to get help <laughs> when doing this live. <laughs> so, and as you can see that uh, actually updating this uh, WebAssembly binary happens as we speak. So this is assembly script. It's really uh, fast when it comes to building things. So it's awesome. It's supposed to be a key care as well, but yeah, that did go away. So that's the, yeah. You can turn down the volume, things like that. Yeah, so that's the very basic stuff. And uh, I think that kind of uh, illustrates the idea here that we are uh, live coding both the actual instruments and and the, and the song itself. So, uh, yeah, and like you could see here, we can change the notes here. We can add some more notes. We can. <laughs> yeah. And so this is uh, how it's built up. Uh, we have the. Um, assembly script synth editor that you saw on the right side. And uh, it goes into assembly script compiler. And um, we have the JavaScript music editor and the JS song compiler. Uh, this is sent to the message port of the audio worklet node. And we pick up the WebAssembly binary in the audio worklet processor. And then we um, initiate it and we start to process and generate sound from it. And, uh, and that means uh, all the audio data is uh, generated in this audio worklet processor. And uh, for the sequencer, it's uh, really a simple music box. Uh, this part I copied from this uh, synth uh, forklang that I mentioned. The synthesizer is uh, a totally different thing because um, uh, for Clang has a kind of a data-driven approach, um, uh, but uh, here we actually generate the so sounds. We write all the code for the sounds in assembly script. And uh, what's here is just a simple pattern sequencer. It's uh, short fixed length patterns, and um, this is uh, like numbers for the notes. And for uh, each instrument, we have a list of patterns to play for that instrument. This is common pattern sequencer structure. So it's really simple. It's just a music box following the sequence in order and playing stuff. And uh, I made this API just to be able to not having to write all these uh, numbers in, uh, in raw memory or in, in arrays so that I can actually write the notes here in JavaScript and it converts it to the proper numbers. And as you can see here, and if, if I want uh, a note with some length to it, it creates this once, repeated once, which is um, just one placeholder for holding notes. So that's kind of uh, how this, um, all the other numbers be, be, uh, above one, there are um, notes, and uh, one is reserved for holding, and zero is nothing. So, so as you can see, I can also write like uh, these. So I can make quarter notes, yeah. And uh, also things like um, making sure that if we are writing the same pattern twice, Reusing it, you see there will be one pattern less so that we don't use up more space than needed. So that's what this JavaScript API is about, is to simplify or make it more convenient to code the sequence, the note data. So we can also record MIDI and uh, generate code. I already showed you that. So. Um, 
Uh, and also, as I showed you, we can paste it as code, and uh, the pattern data is reverse engineered to JavaScript code, so that the durations of the notes and, and the repeated whole commands. So let's see, it was, I think I had it here. That's it. And uh, now I will uh, look into the synthesizer. So it's powered by WebAssembly, written in assembly script. And assembly script, why did I choose it? It's uh, because we have this um, high level readability. We have a low level control. So it's like a high level language, but you can you get that low level feeling. You can even write direct uh, WebAssembly in Syntrix if you want to. And in some cases you want to do that, especially when uh, uh, dealing with um, hot path stuff like this. And uh, uh, the builds are optimized for speed and size. It has all these uh, binary passes to it. And uh, we can create the WebAssembly binaries in the browser, as you saw. So uh, that is a really cool thing. There are no servers involved in this uh, app at all. It's just static HTML uh, and JavaScript. And uh, the assembly, WebAssembly is built, being built right there and then. So it's great for live coding, rapid development, and you get the instant results directly in the browser. So we're here uh, to synthesize the instruments. Let's see if we can, oh. So I will actually turn off this and uh, we can have a look at these pads here. have uh, quite a rich sound and um, um, we'll just find the actual um, instrument in here, the soft pad. If we remove these uh, other saw oscillators, actually not there, that will go very wrong. So <laughs> you should keep an eye on me. <laughs> Yeah, um, because uh, let's say that we just have this, this one, this main oscillator, it will sound very, you hear the difference, right? It's, uh, you lose all the rich stuff. So by having these oscillators that has a little variation in the frequency, we get this rich sound. And uh, we also spread uh, the oscillators uh, left and right so that if you wear a headphone, you will get this uh, stereo feeling. So that's a nice thing. And we also, in this, um, I, I like to have everything in one file actually when I'm working with this live because, um, and when I do music in general, because, um, uh, yeah, the music piece is a one-time thing and then you move on to the next and it's good to just have everything in the same file. But uh, there are some um, uh, built-in uh, instruments and effects uh, here that you would uh, use for, uh, so that you don't have to write all the math that goes in there. Uh, for example, uh, if you look at, for example, uh, there was a saying here earlier about um, uh, reusing uh, uh, math functions uh, if uh, because of um, size. In this case, we are not use, reusing the math functions because of uh, performance. We want the performance. For, so, for example, the uh, sinus oscillator is uh, is written like this, 
and it's uh, written by Max Gray uh, on the assembly script uh, team. And uh, this is great because uh, it serves the purpose of, uh, of, uh, of uh, oscillating. It doesn't serve the purpose for every uh, kind of uh, operation. Uh, like for example, it, it's not good if you, if you are going uh, beyond uh, two times um, math Pi, but uh, that doesn't matter in this case. We're just here for, we want the speed and we want uh, uh, predictable uh, performance. So then this is just perfect. So, um, and we have these uh, other instruments here, like you just heard. So we have uh, flute and we can of course do something with that too. Uh, just uh, find find it. Um, maybe search for it. And you see, this is has a, a noise element to it, so that um, uh, which makes this starting uh, air-like uh, feeling. So. If we just remove that, it will become very boring. And there's also, uh, like here in the mixing part, there's um, things like uh, echo, uh, so that we can uh, turn on and off and, yeah. So I think you, you get it. Uh, I don't wonder where the snare went. to make some music while I'm at it, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, this is kind of a discussion uh, point, uh, really. It's uh, data-driven or code-driven uh, with, um, uh, yeah, when we have WebAssembly, I didn't see that why do we want uh, kind of a data structure to save all these envelope oscillators and filters and kind of creating an interpreter for that. We could rather just, generate the code, uh, the WebAssembly code, so that it could just perform and uh, do its uh, thing. Uh, so that um, uh, the typical thing would, of course, be to do that. You would have faster response if you, if you adjusted parameters, if you had a data-driven approach. But uh, the build time here with AssemblyScript is so fast that, yeah, this is, uh, it's good at, as it is. and. Um, if we look at, uh, for example, um, uh, modern framework, uh, web frameworks, uh, like for example, uh, earlier things like language, uh, you had a language uh, uh, data structure and you looked up the language phrases at runtime. Uh, for Angular, uh, in the recent Angular, they uh, actually build the language into each bundle. So you have one bundle per, per, per language. And so you don't have to resolve that at runtime. And um, yeah, so that's the thing, that our binary can contain the logic directly rather than an interpreter of data describing the logic. And uh, yeah, you get faster and smaller builds, no interpreter overhead, and I see this not just for synthesizers, but also for uh, smart contracts, like for a down payment, you just put the terms into the build and you're good to go, and insurance or whatever, it's cheap to compile and you can make the pre-configured binaries rather than compiling at runtime. Oh, I'm over time. I have to, I have this one. 
<laughs> All right, so I will just go through this. Um, uh, the audio worklet uh, node, um, the proper way of using audio workload would be have one node per instrument and let web audio do the orchestration mixing, but um, then we couldn't have music produced by a single WebAssembly executable binary. And um, so, yeah. Uh, I made a polyfill for the purpose of using this, uh, serving this app. So it actually works on Safari and, and Firefox as well. It's only Chrome that has the real audio worklet. So uh, the real la low latency you only get with uh, Chrome. Um, yeah, but uh, it would be cool to have this audio workload model also as a render audio callback model for WASI. Uh, yeah, so latency is very good with uh, audio workload. You can still experience some clicks and glitches on the lowest latencies, but you can also request higher latency. Uh, finally, this is uh, a thing that I want to show. It's um, like uh, if we have some song here. Um, I will just see what, what do we have here. Okay. So what I can do here is to actually press this button. I should be able to press this button. Oh, so we can take this one. And now it actually uses all the optimization passes. And then we get a WASM file. A WASM file. I actually, uh, I actually inserted, uh, wa I hear you say WASM, but um, I inserted it into a robot narrator and it said wasm. I think that's better. It's really awesome, isn't it? So <laughs> we should say wasm rather than wasm, shouldn't we? <laughs> so, uh, all right. Um, uh, so let's look at this uh, song. And it's, uh, do you see it really? Can you see it? <laughs> it's like uh, 13 kilobytes, so it's pretty good. And uh, what we can do here using, for example, uh, Wasmer, we can uh, uh, just have to take the... So it's a self-executable file, really. <laughs> yeah. Stand alone. And we can, of course, uh, export that to a uh, WAV file using that uh, same uh, SOX tool. It's, um, yeah. We get the WAV file and we should be able to open that in, for example, any audio editor like this and uh, this is Norwegian. You, <laughs> some of you maybe understand it. This was right now, wasn't it? Yeah. And there we go. So. So that's it. Mm -hmm. And um, I have uh, sources on GitHub, uh, so it's all there, open source. And uh, it also uh, contains some pre-projects I had to this. It was, uh, first I did just JavaScript controlling MIDI synths, and then I used uh, the same jo uh, JavaScript controlling Forklang synth, uh, and that same JavaScript was transferred to here for controlling the WebAssembly synth. And uh, I've also made a GIST integration for GitHub so that you can uh, actually uh, share songs using GIST. You just uh, put the Git GIST ID here and you can play different songs and... Uh, I 
think there's a channel missing out or something. Might that be? So that's one of the songs, and uh, yeah, there are more, but uh, well, I think we can say that uh, this will be the last song for today. So this is it. <laughs> And uh, there will be more coming soon, and uh, you can follow me on my homepage, and uh, yeah.